we've already talked about the definition for reduction and oxidation in terms of oxygen transfer and we said that ox oxidation is the addition of oxygen into a substance and reduction is the removal of oxygen from a substance you want to look at the second definition for redox redox in terms of electron transfer electron transfer now oxidation occurs when a substance loses electron or electrons reduction occurs when a substance gains electron or electrons so these are the two definitions for oxidations and reduction now way back in school we had a way of memorizing this oxidation is loss reduction is gain so we had this oil rig oxidation is loss reduction is gain of electrons now we all know what a rig is the big structures these people who mine for oil used to mine for the oil so oil rig I hope that will help you to memorize what oxidation and reduction are in terms of electron transfer. Now here we have two substances involved, substance A and substance B. Then substance A loses one of eight electrons or two or even more electrons to substance B. So substance A which is losing the electron is undergoing oxidation because it is losing electrons. Oxidation is loss. Now, substance B, on the other hand, is gaining electrons. So it is undergoing reduction. Reduction is gain of electrons. Now, when a substance undergoes oxidation, we can say that that substance has been oxidized. So substance A is oxidized because it is losing electron. Then when something undergoes reduction, we can say that that substance is reduced. So we can say B is reduced. But here it's kind of a little bit confusing because gaining reduced but we thought whenever you gain something you increase you don't reduce now the thing we need to remember is electron is negatively charged so when you gain electrons you are gaining negative not positive now imagine writing a test and you get a lot of minuses a lot of negatives what happens to your overall score it reduces so since this substance is gaining electrons and electrons are negatively charged this substance is going to be what reduced is the reason why we use the word reduction for the gaining of electrons to tell us that it is even going to reduce that substance since electrons are negatively charged now let's take a practical example The formation of sodium chloride, an ionic compound. Sodium is element number 11. Chlorine is element number 17. Now, this means that sodium has 11 electrons and chlorine has 17 electrons. The configuration for sodium is then 2, 8, 1. And the configuration for chlorine is 2, 8, 7. Now, in order for them to bond ionically together, sodium will have to lose its one outermost electron to chlorine. Now, when sodium loses the electron, sodium loses one electron chlorine will then gain one electron 
So at the product side, sodium losing one electron, sodium becomes sodium ion with a positive charge. Then chlorine gaining one electron becomes chlorine with a negative charge. That one is called the chloride ion. Now, let's look at what is happening here. Sodium has lost an electron. So sodium is undergoing oxidation because it is losing an electron. Now, chlorine is gaining an electron. So chlorine is undergoing reduction. So we can say that sodium has been oxidized, chlorine has been reduced. All because sodium has transferred one of its electrons, so it has lost one of its electrons. And that electron has been gained by chlorine. Now this is the reason why we said oxidation and reduction occur at the same time. Because when one substance loses an electron, another substance should be ready to gain that electron at the same time. So oxidation, reduction occurring at the same time. Now, we can write equations to represent what is really happening over here. Let's take that one for the sodium. So we have sodium losing an electron. So losing means minus, minus an electron to form sodium ion. Now, in chemical equations, we can write this, but it's not so appropriate. We have to see the plus signs and not the minuses. Eh? So we have to make sure this minus vanishes. So we have to let the electron cross to the other side. Eh? So that we will have sodium. Now, sodium ion is formed. The electron was minus, so it becomes plus electron. This equation describes only the oxidation part of the reaction. Now, we had chlorine. It gained an electron, gained an electron to form a chloride ion. And that is how the reduction process happened. So this is the reduction part of the equation. But you realize both the oxidation and the reduction occurred at the same time. But we've written a separate equation for the oxidation, which is sodium losing an electron to form sodium ion. So when we write something like this, talking about only half of the story, we call that one a half reaction. Because the full story is reduction and oxidation. So when we write an equation for only reduction, we call that one the reduction half equation. When we write an equation only for the oxidation, we call that one to the oxidation half equation. When we combine the two, we get a redox equation, which is a reduction oxidation reaction. So we call this one the oxidation half equation and we call this one the reduction half equation now I would like you to look at the equations critically and let's try and get something out of this equation now in the oxidation half equation you realize the cation was found at the other side of the equation with the electron. So whenever you are writing oxidation half equations, notice this, the cation formed and the electron will be found at the product side of the equation and they will be adding. If you look at the reduction half equation, you realize the anion is found on the product side alone. And the substance or the main substance accepting or gaining the electron is found at the reactant side with the electron. It's one way you identify 
oxidation half equations and reduction half equations. I would like you to keep this one in mind because very soon I'll be giving you oxidation half equations, reduction half equations, and your job would be to identify which one of them is the oxidation half equation and which one of them is the reduction half equation. But before we get there, let's try and combine these two equations together and see if we are going to get the whole redox equation. So the oxidation half equation plus the reduction half equation. What are we going to get? We are going to get sodium plus chlorine plus an electron going to produce sodium ion plus an electron plus chloride ion. Now let's see if we have something that is common to both sides. That is the electron. The electron is here, electron is there. So the electrons will cancel out. So we'll be left with sodium plus chlorine to produce sodium ions and chloride ions. Sodium ions are positively charged, chloride ions are negatively charged. So what do we say about unlike charges? They attract. So they will come together to form what we call sodium chloride. So in the formation of sodium chloride, we've seen that sodium loses an electron to chlorine. Then sodium forms sodium ion and chlorine forms chloride ions. And that alone is a transfer of electron from one substance to another. And it is an example of a redox reaction. The one losing the electron becomes the one going, undergoing oxidation. And it is the one that is oxidized. Then the one gaining the electron becomes the one undergoing reduction and it is being reduced. So let's look at the examples and see if we can identify which one of them is the oxidation half reaction and which one of them is the reduction half equation. So we said something about oxidation half equations. And we said with the oxidation half equations, you always find the ions and the electrons on the product side. And with the reduction half equations, you, you find the substance with its electron that it is gaining on the reactant side. So let's look at this example and see if we can identify which one is an oxidation half equation and which one of them is a reduction half equation. So let's look at the first one. Ion solid losing two electrons to form ion two ions. Now you realize the ion and the electrons are on the product side. So we can say this is the oxidation half equation. So this is an oxidation reaction. Let's look at the second one. You realize on the product side, we don't have the electrons there. The electrons are at the reactant side with the substance. And what did we say about that? That one is the reduction equation. Very easy, huh? Let's look at the third and the fourth one. Try your hands on it. Okay, I hope you got it right. You realize the electron is with the cation on the product side over here. Although we have a, a, a cation at the reactant side, the electrons are not with the cation over here, but they are with the electron, uh, sorry, they are with the cation at the product side. So this becomes an oxidation equation. Looking at the question four, we have the electrons and the ion or the species at the reactant side. And we say that is what? The reduction equation. What about the last one? We have both the species and the electrons at the reactant side. So that one too becomes reduction equation.